friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's Garden Party. So I've stamped those images out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. I'm also going to be coloring to match some pattern paper. I'm using a sheet from the Cartabella Gather at Home collection. So I'm going to tear that out and tuck it under my cardstock panel so I can choose my Copic markers to match. For my birds, I'm going with BG72, BG75, and BG78. I wanted to pull from that darker, dusty blue shade. It's kind of like a tealish blue that is in that pattern paper. And this is the closest that I have with my Copics. I thought that would um, match that nicely. So I'm using that BG78 to lay in my shadows. Put some toward the back of the head, also on the bridge of the nose where the beak is kind of casting a shadow. And then at the body toward the top of the wing where the head would be casting a shadow. And also at the base of the tail. And then I'm blending that out with the BG75 for my mid-tone. And then I'll fill in with the BG72 for my highlight. Just pulling that mid-tone down, down toward the tips of the wings and also the tail. I am going to go back over this image with a second layer. I find that it is especially helpful with these darker shades. So I'm going to just repeat that by going right back over the previous shades that I've done. Um, just covering the same amount of space as well. Um, the only time that I differ sometimes is uh, the highlight shade. I don't always pull it all the way back down again. I sometimes will leave just one layer of that highlight showing as well. Um, just to kind of create like almost like a fourth shade in there. But for these particular images, I did just go completely over them again. And then uh, I actually even went back with my darkest shade, that BG78, and just added a teeny bit to the places that I wanted to be just super dark and shadowed. And then I'm moving on to my second little bird, and I'm going to color this one the same, um, just keeping that darkest shade closest to the body. I want the, the rest of the body to be a different color, so I'm... Just doing the wings and the head with these darker shades, but uh, yeah, I think it's a really different look. I've never used these tones for birds before, but I get a lot of birds in my backyard that are this really deep shade of green, and when the light catches them, they're, they're almost like a blue-green. Um, I think they're called grackles, and uh, I thought it would be kind of fun to represent them here. The ones in my yard look a little bit darker than this even, but I didn't want to go super dark on the card, especially with that pattern paper being mostly pastel. I, I just didn't want to go super dark. Um, I felt like that wouldn't match. It would just have too much contrast. So again, I'm going to do a second layer on this bird here and just increase that saturation and depth. It also helps smooth out the blend and kind of eliminate any harsh lines. And yeah, I just, it's something I almost always do, especially on darker images and on larger images. So I'm gonna finish with that highlight shade, just pulling that mid-tone again toward the ends and filling everything in nicely. And then just like with the first bird, I'm going to go back to that BG78 and just add a few little touches here and there to just really increase the depth in those darkest areas. So for the lighter parts of the body, uh, instead of going with like a creamy tone or a gray tone, I decided to go with this super pale tealish blue. It's in that same family that I use for the darker parts. It's BG70. I really like this shade. It's a barely there shade. It works great for like fairy wings and glass jars and stuff like that, but I thought it would be fun for these birds as well. 
So I'm adding some shading to the areas around the eyes and then also on the throat. And I did go over that a couple of times since I didn't want to darken it up with the next darkest color, with it, which is the BG72. I felt like that would be too dark. So I just used that one shade and then I did soften up the bottom of it with the Colorless Blender. And then I went and added just a touch more of the BG70 under the wing. And then I was trying to decide what colors I wanted to use to represent that peachy tone in that pattern paper. So I was going back and forth between the pale R's and the pale YR's. I ended up going with the YR's. I felt like they were a little bit closer to the color that is actually in the pattern paper. So I'm giving my little birds some rosy cheeks with YR00 and YR01. It was still a little bit dark, so I am going to grab the YR000 and go around the edge with that to help it fade. And I wasn't sure that I really liked it, but I decided to wait and let it dry back and see how I felt about it later. And in the meantime, I'm gonna move on to the little inchworm down at the bottom right, and I'm gonna color the head and every other stripe with this combo, and just kind of pull that color together somewhere else on the seam. The other stripes I wanted to be a bit darker, so I kept the YR01 and added in YR02 and YR04 for that combo. And again, I just put the darkest at the top and blended toward the belly. I also used these shades to do the bird's beaks. I used the YR04 and YR02 for the outside and then the YR01 for the inside of the mouth or the beak. <laughs> and then um, for the tongue, I used R20. It was just a tiny little sliver there. I also gave my inchworm a rosy cheek and I did decide to add a bit of pink into the bird's rosy cheeks. I just felt like it was a little too orange. So I used that R20 and then blended out with the R11. And then I even went around that again with the R000. And I ended up liking that a lot better. It just felt a little more natural of a blush to me. And then for the mushrooms, I went with E000, E00, and E11. I wanted something that still tied in with that pattern paper. So I felt like this pale brown tone was kind of like a flesh tone. It's actually my go-to combo for Caucasian skin. So I felt like that went well with those super pale flowers in that pattern paper. And then I trimmed these images out with their matching dyes. For the background, I'm going to take one of the nesting circle dies from Hello Bluebird, die cut that out of some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and then I'm going to blend on some Speckled Egg Distress Oxide ink. Uh, this isn't a perfect match, so I'm going to end up blending two shades together to kind of get the tone that I'm looking for, but I decided to start with the Speckled Egg, and then I'm going to add in some Cracked Pistachio, but barely uh, any. I'm using a really light hand and just barely dipping into that ink to keep it nice and light. And then I did add a little bit of mowed lawn down at the bottom to create a little bit of a grassy area. So just kind of um, sponged a little bit down at the bottom and then I went back with the cracked pistachio to blend that into the sky area. Once I'm happy with how that background is looking, I wanted to do a little bit of splatter detail to create some more interest. I'm just gonna use the speckled egg for that. So I'm gonna press a little bit onto an acrylic block and then I'll water that down just a tiny bit to make it a little more fluid. And then I can pick that up with a fine tipped paintbrush and I'll tap that against my finger so I can get some nice small little splatters all over that background. Just creates a bit more movement there. And then I was about to set that aside to dry, but I decided that it would be nice to have some splatters with just water as well so that can react to those Distress Oxide inks. 
So I splattered some of that and then I set that aside to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to pull out some more pattern paper to work with the inspiration piece that I already had out. And I'm just checking the backs to see if that might be something that I would want to use. But I wanted something that had a little bit more contrast. So I was going back and forth between that dustier teal and um, a darker green. And um, I ended up going with the dustier teal though because I felt like that one matched the birds the best. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these pieces down. Uh, but you can see how well those patterns work together between the floral and then the gingham and then the very small little print on that darker pattern. So uh, now that my background panel is dry, I'm going to do some stamping using the Hello Bluebird Garden Friends stamp set, which goes so well with the Garden Party stamp set. This one had a sentiment that says, Happy Bird Day, and I really need some birthday cards, so that's the one I decided to use. And I also stamped out a couple of little notes, and I did that using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of Lawn Fawn Apricot cardstock that I've scored and folded to a standard A2 size card. And I'm stamping on the inside using Peachy Keen ink. And I chose another little bird and the butterfly, which is from Garden Friends. And then the sentiment, let's celebrate you, is from Garden Party. So I stamped that down a couple of times to make sure it was nice and bold. And now I am ready to start assembling. I did die cut those pattern papers using the largest of the Lawn Fawn Large Stitch Rectangle Stackables, just so all of the stitching detail around the edges would be uniform. And then I am gluing these down to the card front using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. So I'm going to use the gingham print as my base print on the card front. And then I'll have this kind of, um, it's almost like a little polka dot diamond pattern. And that's going to run from the top to the bottom vertically. And then the floral print that we used as the inspiration for the coloring is going to go horizontally across the center. So I'm just making sure that that is lined up in the center, nice and straight and then smoothing that down into place. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel, so I'm just gonna peel off those release papers. I added quite a bit so it'll be nicely supported on there, so it'll go through the mail nicely. And then I'm going to just make sure that that is in the center of the card, and then I'll press that down as well. And then I can bring in my images. I'm actually going to start with my mushrooms this time because I know that those are the images that I want to be the farthest back in the scene. And then I can layer one of these little birds over top of it. So I'm just going to set that down uh, so it kind of pushes those mushrooms even further back in the distance. And then I'll take the other little bird and this one I want to be almost flying a little bit off the ground, kind of hovering up to sing happy birthday. So I wanted it to look like those notes were kind of coming from its mouth. And then down below that, I'm gonna add the inchworm and just adjust as needed before that glue dries permanent. And then I wanted to fill in those grasses. So I just grabbed a YG25 marker and colored those in. I did wait to see how the grass would look so I could match it to my Copics. To finish up this card, I wanted to add a little bit of bling, so I grabbed some sparkling clear sequins in the mix of sizes, and I'm just adhering those down using my Studio Katia embellishment wand and my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And then I wanted to fill in the centers of those sequins, and I ended up going with some patina stickles. It's this really pretty dusty blue-green that I thought went really well with the color of the birds. So I'm just adding a little dab to the centers of each of those sequins to kind of tie that in. And then I also wanted a little sparkle on the images. 
So I grabbed my favorite Stardust Stickles and put some on the underside of the mushroom cap and on the darker stripes of the inchworm. And then I decided to add just a touch to the bottom edge of the wings and the tail on the birds to kind of represent those grackles I was talking about, how when the light hits them, they look a little bit different, a little bit more iridescent. So there you can see how that is looking, how that catches the light, and I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything listed and linked for you in the description bar below to make it really easy to just click and go. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.